Thank you. Thank you. Look, more than 20 years ago, we took the first bold steps to think hearing care differently. We learned that to make significant innovations, we had to understand how the brain makes sense of sound. Now, this way of thinking laid the foundation to our unique audiological philosophy, brain hearing. A philosophy where we constantly explore new scientific territory in hearing, using these insights to develop technology that supports the brain. In 2016, we then developed Otikon Open, a hearing aid that created a paradigm shift. Built on brain hearing insights, it was based on a groundbreaking discovery that went against the conventions of directionality and open up to speech from multiple directions. Now we take another giant leap in the science of hearing. It's time for the new perspective in brain hearing. New science in hearing has shown that the brain needs access to the full sound scene in order to work in a natural way. This knowledge changes the way we look at hearing loss and sets new requirements for how the industry should develop hearing care technology in the future. Today, we are thrilled to present this new milestone. To give you an idea of what we mean, let's go on a journey into the brain. These new scientific discoveries tell us that two subsystems work together inside the hearing center to help the brain make sense of sound, the orient subsystem and the focus subsystem. These two subsystems are extremely important to the way our hearing works. They're both responsible for different functions, but our hearing depends on how they work together. And they're actually very skilled at it, because while our Orient subsystem constantly scans all surrounding sounds to create a full perspective of the full sound scene, the Focus subsystem helps people select which sounds to listen to. Now, before we move on and give you an insight into what's happening during the hearing process, we have the Chief of Audiology at Oticon, Thomas Behrens, on a video call to tell us more about how this new perspective is affecting the industry. Thank you for being here, Thomas. Now, how big a discovery is this new perspective, do you think? The new perspective in hearing care is huge to us. I don't think you can overestimate it because the hearing center in the brain used to be a black box to us. Now it's been opened up and we understand there are two subsystems we have to support in order to optimally help people with hearing loss. And how is this new knowledge relevant to people with a hearing loss? I mean, what will it mean for them? We can now design hearing aids in a much better way that naturally supports the way the brain is working. On top of that, it also helps hearing care professionals because they can much better fit hearing aids to the individual needs of the person because they understand how the brain is working. Well, that's really exciting breakthrough, Thomas. I'm sure hearing care professionals will also be thrilled to increase personalization in the fitting process. How do you think all these new insights will affect the industry as a whole? It confirms to us at Oticon that we have the right approach. To fully support the brain in making sense of sound, we have to open up to all the meaningful sound in the scene. But it also means that the conventional thinking in the industry has to end. And further to that, we can use it in research so that the brain scanning methods we have can be used to optimize hearing at every stage. It really sounds like a very exciting time for hearing care now and as we move forward. Thank you so much for your time, Tom. So to understand the hearing process and how the ears work together with the brain, we've illustrated the journey of sounds from ear to brain. If we begin outside the ear to the left, we have the full sound scene. Now, everything we listen to, speech, laughter, nature, music, um, the sound of life, they all enter the ear as sound waves. When these sounds reach the inner ear, they convert into a neural code of information. And this neural code is crucial for making sense of sound. It's then transported by the auditory nerve into the hearing center of the brain, which is also known as the auditory cortex. Now, inside the auditory cortex, these neural codes become meaningful sound objects, which the two subsystems, orient and focus, can then start working on. Now, the first step in this process is to orient. 
This is where the brain scans the whole sound scene to detect the sound input and create an overview of sound objects around you. The next step is to focus. It identifies the sound it wants to focus on, listen to, or switch attention to while filtering out irrelevant sounds. And there's a good reason they're numbered one and two. Orient always comes first, because this is where the brain creates an overview of its surroundings and makes sure it has what it needs to make the right decision about what to focus on. If we dismiss the role of the Orient subsystem, we miss out on important cues and become less capable of following conversations and make sense of our surroundings. The two subsystems work continuously and simultaneously together, and I'd like to illustrate how that happens. If we follow the figure, we can see that the sound processing by the brain is a constant interaction between the orient and the focus subsystems. This makes sure that we're always focused on what's most important. Now, while we maintain focus, our brain checks in on the rest of the environment four times every second. Now, this allows our focus subsystem to switch attention if something important appears in the sound scene. We're also lucky to have senior research audiologist and PhD Elaine Eng on a video call to elaborate a bit further about the methods behind our findings. Thanks for joining us, Elaine. Can you tell us a little bit more about how we came to know about these two subsystems? We know about that because three independent research groups studied the two subsystems. They used different imaging techniques to measure the brain activities. Very interestingly, they found very similar results, that the entire sound scenery is represented in the early stage auditory processing, which is the Orient subsystem. In the later stage processing, which is the focus subsystem, only the sound that the listener attends to is strongly represented in the brain. But that's fascinating research, particularly the fact that they all experience similar results. And what do you think all this will mean for brain hearing in the future? We will get to know more about how sounds are being processed and represented in different subsystems. We will also understand more about how changes in the brain relates to different listening difficulties and challenges. This will give us a great foundation in developing the next generation hearing technology, which greatly benefit our users. Well, I think we're all looking forward to seeing what those developments in hearing technology will be, as I'm sure you are too. And thank you very much for your time today, Elaine. So, how does this way of thinking differentiate from conventional technology? Well, with the conventional approach to hearing care technology based on directionality, gain reduction, speech prioritization, and compression, people have limited access to the full sound scene. It suppresses the natural sound input and delivers a poor neural code to the brain. Now, not only does this cut people off from their surroundings, it goes against the brain's natural way of working. And with a limited sound scene, we are actually turning a hearing problem into a brain problem by failing to treat the hearing loss in a proper way. Now, this can lead to a variety of consequences, such as increased listening effort, increased mental load, reorganized brain functions and accelerated cognitive decline and accelerated brain volume shrinkage. From numerous studies, we know that inadequately treating hearing loss with less auditory stimulation sent to the brain can turn brain problems into life problems. And this is why people with hearing loss can experience increased risk of depression, fall-related injuries and dementia. According to research, 35% of dementia cases can be explained by modifiable risk factors such as hearing loss. We also know that the risk for dementia is increased twofold for people with mild hearing loss, threefold for people with moderate hearing loss, and fivefold for people with severe to profound hearing loss. But, in fact, getting the right treatment in due time can potentially reduce the risk of dementia more than any other action. This is why our brain hearing philosophy and its understanding of the brain is essential if we are to prevent people from hearing loss-related health risks. Now, all these scientific breakthroughs make it clear why hearing care technology must work with the brain. Our brains need access to the full sound scene, 
not just fragments and not limited access to just speech. We need to give the brain more from its surroundings. With every little nuance, every detail in the sounds of life, we give it access to the full perspective and make sure that people with a hearing loss won't miss out on any part of life. This unique way of thinking has been shown to take user benefits to a new level. With the right hearing loss treatment in due time, users can turn this negative chain of events into positive benefits. But this requires a hearing solution that's able to support the natural way the brain works. Now, the brain is the world's best sound processor, and its role is central to our progress in audiology and hearing care technology. Now, what we've done today is give you a glimpse into our brain hearing philosophy and what we do differently at Odicon. We work to better understand and support the brain in making sense of sound. Because each time we introduce a technology that follows our brain hearing philosophy, we move a step closer to a world where people are no longer limited by a hearing loss. It's a journey of constant discovery, one that we've followed for decades. And the new insights only reinforce this unique approach. With a new perspective in brain hearing, the latest scientific breakthrough shows how providing the full sound scene is the best we can do for the brain. And this knowledge defines our next step forward, a step at the forefront of hearing care, and a step that turns the new perspective in brain hearing into a reality. Thank you so much for listening.